Welcome everyone to Movement Building from Home Week 3. And this, today we're going to talk about personal ecology, also known as self-care. Uh, so we are convening these calls in response to the COVID-19 crisis. We do want to bring people together uh, for some peer-to-peer -peer learning about sustaining both our activism and our movement building during these uncertain times. Uh, these calls will focus on running online meetings, which is week one, practicing online community care, which was week two last week, uh, self-care, which is today, and community management. Uh, my name's Abby. I'm one of the organizers. I'm joined by Chad, who gave the nice disclaimer. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Um, please do put your name in the roll call so people can follow up with you afterwards if uh, you, you meet someone cool in the breakout room and answer our check-in question because uh, we want to know how you're doing and what you're working on and whether or not you're taking tomorrow off from May Day. With that, I'll pass it to Chad. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I am here with our community participation guidelines reminder. Uh, we are here to be respectful and honest, inclusive and accommodating, appreciative and open to learning from everyone else on the call. We do not attack, demean, disrupt, harass, or threaten others or encourage any such behavior. If you'd like to see the full Mozilla Community Participation Guidelines, you can find a link near line 76 towards the bottom of page two right now. And should you have an issue report or something to discuss related to the CPG, you can email Abby and or me. Abby, what are our goals today? Thanks for asking, Chad. So first goal really is to check in with all of you. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Um, this series has been a nice way to catch up and hear how all of you are doing. Um, we also want to understand how personal ecology helps us remain engaged in our work. And we also want to share needs and suggestions for self-care as part of our work to sustain communities. With that, we'll go on to start with some silent documenting. Yeah, absolutely. To reflect kind of on our own experiences uh, and to go after those goals, uh, we're going to start with uh, the silent documenting and kind of respond to this definition of personal ecology from the Rockwood Leadership Institute's Art of Leadership Program. So there the definition of personal ecology is to maintain balance, pacing, and efficiency to sustain our energy over a lifetime. We're gonna take about 10 minutes here, five to type and plus one and ask those kind questions that invite people to expand on their answers, another five to surface things out loud and discuss them. Uh, but there are a number of prompts today and you can skip around, you can answer a few but not others. There's no need or pressure to respond to all of them. But here are the prompts. Um, you know, what are some common things that cause us to not be centered or to be out of balance and stressed out, both from the before times and right now in this crisis? Um, what comes to mind for you when you hear the phrase personal ecology? Or maybe the follow-up, what stands out for you in that definition? Now the prompt uh, says, if you feel comfortable sharing, have you ever experienced burnout? What were the effects like? What impacts did you feel? And just as importantly, what helped you recover? And then finally, what would you need to continue sustaining yourself and your activism for another 10 weeks or 10 months or 10 years? So just an invitation to reflect on any of those that speak to you. We'll take about five minutes. When you finish, please plus one and affirm others and ask those kind questions. And then we'll go on. Starting the timer now. and let me know if there are questions.
Okay, if you folks are still sharing thoughts, uh, we're a little over halfway through, but now is a great time to uh, take a look, especially maybe at some of the later stuff, and plus one and affirm the things that speak to you or seem especially powerful to you, ask any questions that you have, and in just uh, under about two minutes or so, we'll come back and see if there's anything we'd like to surface and share out. All right, that's time, and these are uh, these are amazing and uh, very generous contributions here from everyone. So many plus ones, so many uh, real insights that seem especially powerful to me. Um, but what about to you? Is there anything folks would like to uh, verbalize or point out or uh, just offer up for discussion? You can just unmute and, and go ahead. Um, if Cora is interested in sharing, I'd like to hear from the ecologist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm an ecologist by training. So that was when I saw this session and I was like, oh, this will be really interesting. Um, so, I mean, my definition was basically, my interpretation was is basically the classical definition of an ecology, which is the interaction of organisms with their environment. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, but it, in that way, it seems like that term is actually being used pretty well here for what I think it's intended to mean. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll come back to the end and see if we've explained it well. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, coffee went down the wrong pipe there. Um, looking at just things that seem to have a, a lot of heat around them and plus ones, you know, being overwhelmed as a stressor, um, unrealistic goals or uncertainty, absolutely. Um, Thinking about personal ecology and the, those interactions we have with our environment. Yep, we got a lot of plus ones there. Um, things that we need to we need to have to sustain us. We'll talk about that a lot. You know, including um, uh, people, communities, uh, the work around us. Those are all those all seem spot on. We have energy, sustaining energy over a lifetime as being something notable here. Um, I think. Grant, you also, in addition to talking about the efficiency and the definition, did you also talk about sometimes like the nature of the work itself can be sustaining to you? Yeah, sort of the nature of the work. Uh, there are, it, it, in my role, I have sort of an, un, I think, an un, unusually high flexibility in what I get to choose to do. It's not all work delivered to me from the upper echelon or executives, all of that. And having the ability to choose the work we do or how we approach, I think, makes things more sustainable. If I have to do something that is either rote or tedious or being compelled to do something that is really sort of outside my expertise or my wheelhouse, as some, some people on my team say, mm -hmm. is I think it has a higher effect on the amount of burnout than say, if I get to pick what I wanna do and I get in the zone, I get a good flow going, it just feels like no matter how long I do it, what, even if it's like several hours at a time without moving, it actually feels relieved. 
were leaving and instead of um that have like winding me up towards burnout thank you thank you for that share um looking also here acknowledging that sometimes you have to drop things absolutely and thinking about what we might need to sustain things i noticed clone cloning came up and was doubled down on <laughs> um, but also connected to cloning in that comment was the idea of resiliency and um I think in Rockwood's stance, uh, personal ecology kind of helps provide for resiliency, but I'm not sure that's something that we've gotten uh, deeply into here in the agenda today, but that's a, that's a great point and a great question. Uh, and, and the need for both is uh, keenly felt. Abby or anybody else, if you have anything else to share or are we ready to move on to um, a self-assessment that Abby's gonna lead us through? Take it away, Abby. Um, yeah, no, I think just when, so I was reading the answers yeah, yeah. as I was thinking, um, one thing, one comment I thought that was interesting, uh, was like self-care versus personal ecology, um, where their ecology is understood by this person. And I think as how we define it, it, it includes more than just yourself. Like there, there are other people that are part of like your balance and that you need to sustain. So I thought that was interesting. Sorry, we didn't really need to go through all that. I just no. read it and it's like, ah, interesting point. Absolutely. Let's self-assess. <laughs> okay, on to self-assessment. So one of the big reasons why we wanted to talk about personal ecology is that um, what your balance looks like right now is probably very different than it was two months ago and probably different from what it will be in a month. So we thought this would be a good time to go through a self-assessment just to check in with how we're at and be honest with ourselves around what, what is sustaining us and what isn't. So in section five, you scroll down, we do have a list of prompts ranging from things like I have time to play in ways that refresh and renew me um, to things like I feel at peace or I regularly get a good night's sleep. Um, so what we're gonna do for the next 10 minutes is you're gonna copy these prompts and paste them somewhere private for yourself. And then we'll give you time to rank each of these statements from one to five. One means this is never true for me, like I never have time to play. And five is I always have time to play. Uh, once you go through and rank them all, you can tally up your score if you want. Um, but then you can make a list for yourself of things you wanna continue, things that are already pretty high that you wanna keep doing, uh, things you wanna improve or increase, and then things you wanna to try to work towards. So we'll give you 10 minutes. Feel free to mute and face mute while you do this. I know um, this can be difficult introspective work. I'll check in after five minutes just to see how people are at. Um, and yeah, anyone have any questions before we sit silently for 10 minutes? All right, please copy those prompts and we'll check in in five. Should I pause the recording this time, Abby? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Right. We'll also pause it. <laughs> and welcome back from that self-assessment. Um, before we go to breakout rooms today, we're just going to talk for a little bit about this idea of you know how to practice personal ecology. Again, you know, thinking of that as a big expansive uh, heading for this section, not because Abby and I are experts, but because we're all going to be sharing our approaches together to practicing personal ecology. Now, as with community care, there's a long and rich uh, history here in radical politics, foundational work done by women of color. And if this is uh, kind of your first time thinking about personal ecology or you've done it before and you just wanna go further and learn more, there's, there's lots to, to explore you know, outside of this call. Um, our big idea here comes from Akaya Winwood, who is one of the trainers that we had at Rockwood. And uh, I love the quote. I think it's just very uh, powerful and a simple way to say this. You can't sustain a movement if you don't sustain yourself. And this idea is really integral to the work right now. You know, it's important, you know, at all times during the four times uh, right now, when things were going, you know, you know, things might have been going really well. There are times probably where we shortcut some of this because what we're doing is so rewarding, um, but it is something to pay close attention to right now. Sometimes this is known as self-care or well-being. Uh, we like the phrase personal ecology because we feel it's a little more holistic. And it really does require, you know, intent, um, caring, and frequent self-assessment. This is a process. This is a habit we develop. Uh, this is a not just a one-time negotiation, but an ongoing renegotiation that we can go through together. And we can certainly use support from others. It is certainly appropriate to find, you know, that uh, partner or trusted community member, or maybe a sponsor, or a coach, uh, a mentor to say, you know, I've been feeling this way lately. 
here's the things I'm trying to do to remain centered. You know, is it working? Uh, am I coming across as caring as I would like to be in our conversations? Things like that can be useful check-ins as well. This is both strategic and just. When I say strategic because um, ideally here this becomes right systemic. Instead of getting other people to practice personal ecology, you start building cultures and communities that have it as kind of like a ritual or a practice built into them. And at that point where it becomes part of what the community does, I think it can probably become more and more uh, just in that we know the ability to practice personal ecology can sometimes rest at you know, quite a powerful intersection of, of privilege. And for those of us that have opportunities to practice it regularly, I think it's important we carry it forward and think about ways to you know, extend that privilege to others, to ensure that they can practice it, um, and to ensure that there's not you know, any one maybe blocker from that list that's really short-circuiting people's capacities to uh, take care of their, their own needs. So part of this is developing our own personal ecology habits, and part of this is doing the community care work to extend this to others, I think. It is a very structured process, uh, but those structures are more about checking in and, as I said, renegotiating than they are about having uh, something super strict and that doesn't change over time. And when we think about the dimensions of personal ecology, uh, we think about things like allowing ourselves joy, uh, allowing ourselves to have the feelings we have, the reactions, the mistakes, acknowledging the challenges uh, and the feelings we have about those challenges, uh, whether we develop a practice of kind of letting them go or resting with them and unpacking them and trying to approach them more and more constructively. Um, it's probably different for each of us and for each feeling, but you know, acknowledging that they're there. Sharing power is something here to use community care, as I said, to ensure others can practice this. Uh, knowing when you need to restore yourself to avoid burnout is hopefully um, an awareness, a mindfulness that comes with turning this into a habit or a practice. The structures you might create include processes and relationships that allow you to do the check-in work, right? The check-in is one habit and then the personal ecology behaviors can become uh, another set of habits uh, when you need them. It is a frequent renegotiation of the work and life balance, but also the overlap and as Grant suggested earlier, the nature of each. I think when I first came to this idea, I had a very um, superficial understanding of it. It's probably at a point in my life where I said, oh, what a rough day. I need to go have you know, this drink or eat that food or play that game or you know, whatever it was, see that movie. Um, but I understand it now differently. Uh, and indeed, think about the nature of my work and the nature of my time outside work, uh, how they complement each other and how both can be you know, fulfilling in different balances to each other as long as both are kind of what I need and, and I check in on that quite, quite frequently now. Modeling personal ecology for others is a great way to extend this privilege, you know, making sure folks see you practicing it, explaining some of your process if you have the opportunity, helping people have not only the opportunities but some of the mindsets and approaches to this that will help them get started in productive ways and feel supportive, uh, sorry, supported, right, in, in practicing personal ecology and learning how to do it. And that's the big question. How do we help each other work towards sustainable personal ecology for ourselves, but also for those around us as organizers and activists? And uh, to get it, maybe some answers to that question, Abby's gonna take us into breakout rooms. Uh, for sure, did you wanna talk about that? Sorry, your Instapod's beeping. <laughs> you wanna talk about the question that came up? Or did oh, you address yeah. that? Yeah. Yes, how does equity fit in here? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Um, I think. Equity here for me is not synonymous with, but very closely related to the idea of um, justice in this kind of practice. And thinking about uh, folks for whom like, maybe leaving this call and practicing personal ecology or like brainstorming some habits is something that can be done immediately. And the folks who are really like struggling to see just even opportunities for this right now. And in so much as we can, and in the communities we can influence and share power within, you know, if we have that, that power to share, trying to uh, make sure others can, can practice it, I think is a strong dimension of equity and inclusion uh, that builds up, you know, trust, safety, accessibility to other things uh, based on, you know, having our physical needs, our, our time needs, our financial needs um, addressed in, in helpful ways. Um, that, is, that is part of, right, the, the struggle. Uh, and that is part, I think, of the, the responsibility for um, folks who can to, to extend that privilege. And that's another part of that is right, talking about strategically. So how do you go from like 
kind of understanding your own practice to helping others understand personal ecology to helping others build this into your culture. I think that uh, ultimately is the place where um, equity resides, where uh, this is an element of community care. People practice for each other uh, and can check in with each other to make sure that they're checking in with themselves and that people are not excluded from this practice. I don't think that answer is satisfactory and I think it's incredibly hard to achieve. Um, but that, those are my ideas and thinking around it. Thanks so much, Chad. Um, yeah, so I think with that, we'll move on to the breakout rooms. And um, I guess related to what Chad was saying, I forgot to mention it with the self-assessment. So we did get those prompts from Rockwood Leadership Training, uh, where we took a lot of this personal ecology idea from. And I would recommend you save these prompts and just check in with yourself um, every now and then to see how you're doing. I know the first time I took it, I got a pretty high score and I was like a little bit smug. I was like, oh, I'm so good at like my work-life balance. I could do this forever. Um, then the next time I took it, it was like right before the Mozilla Festival <laughs> and it was like far lower. It's like, ah, I see. <laughs> I see what happens here. <laughs> so yeah, keep that in mind um, and keep that in mind with our breakout rooms because in the prompts, we'll be talking about like what your current balance is right now and knowing we're in a pandemic, you might be a little bit tilted. <laughs> you might have fallen over. Um, but yeah, think about what it is now and just be honest about that. And then also the balance you want. Um, where do you want to be? And then finally, one thing you want to bring to your community about personal ecology. So those are the prompts. But as quick reminders, uh, do listen to each other. Thank each other for sharing, especially this topic. I think um, it's tricky to share sometimes. So please avoid judgment any solutioneering, be kind to one another. Only share what you're comfortable with sharing, especially if you're talking about burnout. I know not everyone wants to talk through that. There is an ask for help button at the bottom of the screen that will call either chat or myself into your room. Um, and at the beginning, say hi to each other and introduce yourselves if you haven't already met already. But quick reminder of the three prompts. What's your balance like now? What's your ideal balance? And then what's one thing you wanna to bring to your community around personal ecology? Um, any questions before we go to the breakout room? Chad. All right, uh, I'm going to open the rooms and pause the recording. See you all in just a little bit. Well, thank you and welcome back from those breakout rooms. Uh, we want to give you a few minutes here before the closing circle to share one powerful next step. So we're at item eight near the bottom of page seven. What is a powerful next step that you might take after today's conversation? Please share anything you're comfortable sharing, affirm others with those plus ones and kind questions, um, but go ahead and share. We'll see if there's anything people would like to have, um, you know, expanded on a little bit before we go to closing circle. Uh, but this might be something you bring to yourself or you bring to your community. And we'll come back together in about three minutes here. All right, if you are done, great time for plus ones and questions. Uh, also, perhaps, uh, in the interest of time, is there anything anybody would like to uh, share out loud? There's some uh, trends here about you know play and other kinds of breaks and activities. Yeah. Uh, without guilt. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's a really important point, Chad. But the, uh, shout out to my breakout room mates, Susie and Cornelius. They really uh, uh, reinforced the idea of simple joy, like long walks and taking care of plants, or buying even new plants during this, these times. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, these are, are all great. Thank you for sharing these. Thank you for contributing so much to the call today and your breakout groups. Um, Abby or anyone else, any kind of uh, closing thoughts here on these next steps before we go to closing circle? I just want to say I just put a, a, a succulent thing in my shopping cart for this like online delivery thing we have here in Toronto. And I was waiting to see if they'll give me a discount if I leave it in my cart. You know how you can do that and wait a bit. But I, I feel you deep. No, I did not know that. <laughs> Abigail. <laughs> Like, oh, did you forget this? Here's 10% off if you buy it now. <laughs> yeah, that happens quite frequently. Oh, it's a good hack. Good hack. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to try that one out uh, as well as many of these ideas. Um, <laughs> Abby, you want to take us through closing circle for today's call? Yeah, for sure. Um, so first up, reminders, next week is our final call. Uh, so please help us make it the best call yet. Please complete the survey linked here in our reminders, we do use the feedback here. We use the feedback actually to rework this call quite a lot. So it's pretty different than what it was before. Uh, so do listen, please give us your feedback. Shares and shout outs, uh, anyone in your community really helping you keep up your personal ecology or people from your breakout room have a good conversation. Now's a good time to share some gratitude. If you have any requests for peer assists, here's a great section for you to put them in. Um, earlier this week, we had people asking like, what's a good image editor? Uh, stuff that's completely unrelated to what we're talking about, you can still ask them here. People are pretty willing to help you out and uh, help you debug GIMP. Uh, below that, we have a bunch of resources, including a few that were shared above. And uh, there's even more being written here about the moon. That's interesting. Um, so a bunch of resources. I'm going to highlight this one, the self-care and sustaining activism infographic from the Global Fund for Women. I am just such a visual learner. I just really like seeing this as an infographic um, with five points. And point two is about um, acknowledging power differences, which I think is really important and something we don't often do. So a bunch of resources. Please add more here. It's really helpful. Uh, join us in Slack, five ways to stay involved. Uh, we do have a movement building from home channel that we'll keep using after these calls. So that's a nice place to, to share how things are going with your virtual organizing or even for reminders for things like personal ecology or if you have any other questions around this whole series. Um, and then a final reminder of the feedback. We care about it this much. Uh, please give us feedback. It, we really do value it. Um, yeah, it's great. So with that, I think we're done the call. Oh, right on time. See you next week for community management. Chad, any last words? Uh, thank you so much for everything you contributed today for uh, joining us for this entire program. And please do use that survey to let us know what you would like next week uh, as we close things out together. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks so much.